Hello, hello, and welcome back to Chapter 7, Consideration and Form. So, Section B, Certainty. Vague or imprecise good consideration is not going to be enforceable. The promise must be clear. A promise to give a good price on a future contract is not good consideration. It promised to build such residential uh, premises as the promiser may consider it appropriate will not cons constitute good consideration. Page 219. In white and bluent, Mr. Bluent uh, lent his son some money. After his death, his executor sued his son to regain the money. The son's only defense was an argument that his father had forgiven the debt if he would stop complaining how he distributed his property in his will. This is considered a one-sided uh, consideration. There is no consideration in this case. In the case Dunton versus Dunton, Mr. Dunton promised to pay his, Mrs. Dunton £600 per month in return for her promise to conduct herself with sobriety. I quote, with sobriety and in a respectable, orderly, and virtuous manner. Unquote. Page 219. This type of consideration is also known to be a type of illusory consideration as it was too vague. What kind of conduct are we talking about here, right? Um, the promise to connect herself respectfully was a promise to do which Miss Dunton was already bound to do. Thus, there is no good consideration. In R versus CAE Industries Limited, courts will strive to give the meaning to the terms of the of an agreement which uses a vague term. Okay, um, in Nicole. Limited versus Simmons, if an argument contains a meaningless term, a court is able to sever the entire, to sever the uncertain term if the term is not essential to the agreement and when there is essential terms of the contract, uh, of the agreement is clear. Section C, firm offer, a firm offer is when the buyer offers the owner a fixed price for the asset, and that offer is promised to be open for a specific period of time. The purchaser of an asset makes an offer to the seller to buy it at a stated price and promise. A supplier of goods, of goods promised to provide goods to, to a customer at a certain stipulated price. The, the agreement will be unenforceable if the customer has given no commitment in return to purchase any goods. To make this binding, the buyer has to commit to the seller as the exclusive supplier. By doing so, there will be consideration. The customer has restricted its freedom to buy from no other supplier. It has made a commitment to buy from only one exclusive supplier. McCamus mentioned that an individual ordered, uh, order placed by the customer before the supplier withdraws the offer um, will make the contract binding. An example of this would be to put a deposit to secure a rental unit. The renter is committed to rent that unit and the landlord is um, has a legal detriment to rent that place to the renter. There is a binding rental agreement under this situation. Section D. Illusory consideration. McCamus defines illusory consideration as an agreement that reserves the right of one party to proceed with the transaction only if he or she wishes to do so um, would fail for want of mutuality. There is no consideration in this type of agreement and it is not enforceable. This happens only uh, this happens when there is an appearance of an agreement. One party reserves the right to proceed with the transaction if he or she wants wanted to. Several examples of this uh, consideration are as follows. Number one purchase a real estate subject to the purchaser's approval failed for the lack of consideration. Agre number two, agreement with a corporation that was stipulated to be subject to the approval of the company's presidents will also lack, um, will also fail for the lack of consideration. Number three, an example of an illusory consideration is when I offer you $100 if you can do something. This is a promise that the promiser can, can keep. Um, one party has made no commitment. As a result, both parties are not able to enforce the agreement. Section E. Implied Consideration. It is an implied 
uh, implicit undertaking made by the promisee. In the case Woods versus Lucy, Lady Duff Gordon, there was an implied consideration. This case is considered to be a case of illusory consideration with an implicit promise. The case was about a fashion designer who hired an agency to have the exclusive right to her endorsement and fashion design. The agency was to find businesses for Lucy. In return, the agency would receive a 50% commission. Lucy placed her endorsement on fabrics without the knowledge of the agency. Thus, she was able to withheld the profits from the plaintiff. The main issue in this case is, um, in this case, was was the contract enforceable? Okay. The New York Court of Appeal ruled that it was enforceable. It can be implied from the agreement form that the agency was to use reasonable effort to find businesses for Lucy. Quote, a promise may be la lacking, and yet the whole writing may be instinct with an obligation imperfectly expressed. In the Royal Bank of Canada versus Kisha, 1967 2 OR 379 at 388, the requirement of considerations sufficient to support a guarantee was stated by Laskin. Quote, the law is clear, even trital, that a promise of forbearance for no defined period is sufficient consideration for a guarantee for a, of a third party's indebtedness to the promisor, and that the guarantee were given in writing is enforceable against the guarantor although the benefit of the promise runs to the principal debtor only." Unquote. So, the forbearance of a bank to call in the brother's loan is consideration. The court reads in this implied promise on the part of the bank to find a bank contract, find a binding contract. All right, so let's see another case here. Okay, in the case Tobias versus Dick and T. Ethan's company, Dick gives Tobias exclusive exclusive rights to sell machines. Tobias tricked Dick into selling, no, into signing an exclusive distribution agreement, which imposed no obligation on Tobias. Dick has no one to, else to sell. He can only try to sell more to Tobias, but Tobias won't buy anymore. Dick then makes a new agreement. Um, a new contract with T. Ethan's company to sell the machines in Tobias' jurisdiction. Dick's, um, Tobias then sues Dick for a breach of contract. Alright, so the issue here is was there a contract? It was held that there was no consideration for the promise. Um, promise consideration for the promise of exclusive rights to sell. The agreement lacked mutuality. Alright, so section F, the popcorn theory. Something as little and insignificant as a little pop, uh, peppercorn is enough to be used as consideration when given in exchange for a promise. No matter how small the consideration is, anything can be good consideration. The law does not look into the matter of what is adequate consideration. In the bargain theory, something of value must be exchanged for something of even trivial value is binding and enforceable. The case, Nova, the Nova Scotia, um, the, the Bank of Nova Scotia versus McKellen is a good example of this theory. McKellen offered, uh, McKellen offer is the promise to help the bank locate her ex-husband and in exchange the bank will release her of the debt. This was good enough to be consideration and the bank is binding to this contract. Alright so that is end of part 2 of chapter 7 consideration and form. Um, we'll be looking back in part 3 starting with section G nominal consideration. So until next time We'll uh, see you then. Thank you.